people newfound love and respect for your next comic. Hey, humans, listen. Johnny Kors. There you go. There you go. That is his slave name. Uh, the one cool thing about this view that, that I've noticed before anything is that a lot of black women really love him. All right? Yes. And when black women love you, you're either really great or you just owe them bitches money. All right? <laughs> this guy, though, I know that he's really great, I can tell, because despite you looking at his other friends, this guy is a wonderful cat and very funny. Everybody, this is our headliner, so I don't need you to just applaud. I need you to lose your goddamn mind for this guy. Everybody put it together really big for Johnny Cohen! Everybody, you're supporting live comedy. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. That's fantastic. Thank you. And Tony, Mr. Sparks, you did an excellent job today uh, hosting. Everybody give a round of applause to Tony. Hello, hello Ronan Park. Hi. I, I was on my way up here. I was, uh, before I could start... With my regular routine, I was driving across the Golden Gate Bridge. I was behind this Prius, and the, there's a bumper sticker on the back of the Prius that said, What would Jesus drive? <laughs> well, he's a carpenter, so I'm pretty sure it would be an F 150. <laughs> Just. So, okay, 33 years, 32 years, right? So I don't quite have you guys beat. I've been with uh, my wife for. Uh, 27 years. Thanks. You're done. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, maybe you guys do the same thing I do. See, uh, what I do is I celebrate two anniversaries. The anniversary of our first date. Yeah. And the anniversary of the day that we got married. Yeah. Romantic, right? <laughs> See, that way I'm guaranteed to get laid twice a year. No, but it's true. Uh, we've been together for, for a long time, and, and when she moved in, I lost control of the remote, so I'd watch whatever she's watching, so uh, it was like House Hunters International for a while, which is fantastic. I could get some sleep. But now things have changed. You know, she's starting to watch shows like Snapped. I almost got away with it. Wives with knives. She, she's taking notes. Side night smells like almonds. Should, should I be concerned? No, but she, she is. She's very uh, excited about the amount of time that we've been together. So she tells people that we've been together for 28 years. But she also tells people that she's 39. So then people start doing math in their head. <laughs> Anyone else lie about their age? And don't get me wrong, she can pass for 39. I do. I lie about my age. I tell people I'm 10 years older than I actually am. Now, that way, when people compliment me and go, like, man, you look great, I'm, I'll take the compliment because I'm shallow. <laughs> no, but, but my real age, my real age is 48 years old. Uh, and you know what that means? In two years, I'll get my AARP card. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. This means I can do whatever I want. I can go over to Denny's, get the early bird special, get my AARP discount because I'm a starving comedian. That also means that I can drive on 101. 30 miles per hour with my left turn signal on, lane splitting for 15, 20 miles. I'll get pulled over by the cops and whip out my AARP card. He's gonna look at it, gonna look at me, gonna look at it, gonna look at me, gonna look at it, gonna look at me. And then he'll go, oh, I get it, driving while old, that's very funny, huh? You know, you would have gotten away with this anyway because you're white. That's kind of how I see that going. But I'm so glad that I'm not dating um, now. I mean, now you have these websites, you know, like J-Date, Farmers Only. And there's this new one 
that is uh, for serial killers, but they see, can't seem to get past the first date. It's just very <laughs> weird. I just thought of that. <laughs> now, a little, a little bit more about me. I, I was born Irish and Catholic, and as a good Catholic, they tell you have to give up something for Lent, so this year, I gave up my New Year's resolution. <laughs> I'm a true Catholic in that I go to church twice a year. <laughs> Christmas and Easter, for those of you... I see a couple of people in the audience going, Christmas and Easter. <laughs> no, but, but I always, like, uh, would listen to the gospel that they were talking about on, uh, like, uh, at the altar, and I imagined it if it took place today. For example, they had the story about Barabbas or Jesus. They were going to say, let one of them... Yeah. Pontius Pilate was going to let going to let one of them free and let the crowd decide. I can't get the words out of my mouth. Okay, so the setup is all bad. It, if it took place today, though, it would be in the form of a reality show, and it would go something like this. I'm Pontius Pilate, your host, and welcome to Crucifixion. It's the show where you, the people, get to decide who gets to live and who gets to die. So let's meet our contestants. First, we have Barabbas Nefarious up against Jesus H. Christ. Now, his middle name is Hubert. A little trivia for you. <laughs> Now, if you want Barabbas to live, then text to 666. Unless you're German, and then it's 999, but hold your phone upside down when you go. Phone lines will be open for another three hours. What? 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 Oh. Well, that's interesting. Um, the results are already in, and the West Coast didn't get a chance to vote. They don't matter anyway. Okay, so the, people that are gonna, the person that's going to be set free is Barabbas, but Jesus, you get our consolation prize, and this week it's, it's death. But before we nail you, let's bring in the apostles and get one last song. Let's come on in. They'll be your background singers. Now, I doubt Thomas will be here, and Judas was standing, was hanging outside. We'll bring in the rest of the apostles. I'm, I'm Pontius Pilate reminding you I'm washing my hands of this whole show. <laughs> Filling in for me next week will be James Franco. Until then, peace out. And then Jesus is standing there going like, I don't like reality shows. <laughs> this is kind of a bummer. And am I alone in this? Does anyone else think this way? Yeah? Well, well here's the thing, too, is, is that uh, I, I love that you get holidays off as being Catholic in, in school. As a kid, it was fantastic. It didn't matter how stupid the holiday was. A good example of a bad holiday or a stupid holiday is Columbus Day. Columbus gets a holiday for getting lost. He's trying to find a spice route to India, ends up in the Caribbean. Slightly off course. Typical man didn't ask directions. All he had to do, go into any 7-Eleven that could have told him where India was. <laughs> Personally, I want to come out with Columbus GPS. It sends you where you never intended to go. <laughs> Formerly Apple Maps. <laughs> no, but other holidays, uh, other holidays that come to mind. Fourth of July, great holiday, birth of a nation, all that. And there's nothing more American than buying a Japanese car on the Fourth of July. <laughs> yeah. Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a holiday where you can be thankful for what you have. It's a time to hang out with family or to stand in line for a sale the next day. But the story behind it makes no sense because it's about these white people. Because it's always about white people, right? It's about these white people. They move into the neighborhood, changing it forever, but there are no foods or sprouts, and so they're starving. So the Indian people, they feel sorry for them, and so they broke bread at the very same table. And you know what they say? Once you feed them, they'll never go away. And that's why white people are here to this day. <laughs> We never talk about the thing, second Thanksgiving. The second Thanksgiving is when the Indian people are cold and the white people give them blankets. <laughs> too soon for a smallpox joke? Really? Child Tears was like 200 years ago. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I'll move on to Christmas. Any parents here? I know you guys are. And my brother over there. Okay, and another. Okay, so this is for you guys. You tell your kids all year long, don't talk to strangers, and then you sit them on Santa's lap and you wonder why they're crying? Really? Is it that or because Santa's just weep and creepy? I mean, who else can get away with saying stuff like, sit on my lap, little girl, and uh, tell Santa what you really want? <laughs> Have you been naughty? Do you want to be on my nice list? Are you, uh, ho, ho, ho? Do you want me to fill your stocking with something yummy? You know, I've been watching you. I know when you're sleeping. And I know when you're awake. It's creepy! <laughs> Creepy. But you know, you know a holiday's made it when they have a sale for the holiday. Right? 
President's Day, not that old, right? When I was a kid, it was Lincoln Washington's birthday, now it's President's Day, but they have sales, right? So I can just see it now. The MLK White Cell. All cheats, 50% off, but only at Trump Resorts. Uh. <laughs> now, people say, say, like with Donald Trump, that, well, actually, he is the oldest president we've ever had. And if you want to win a bet, I just gave you a tip right now. Because everybody's going to say it's Ronald Reagan. He can make some money. Just give me my split afterward. Okay? But he's the uh, oldest president we've ever had. And so, to me, he's the giant orange T-Rex of presidential politics with his tiny little T-Rex arms and his tiny little T-Rex hands trying to bend over, play Scott Joplin, if he could just reach the keyboard. You know what they say, tiny hands, tiny uh, gloves. And I swear, Kefefe is his safe word. If you don't believe me, ask Ivanka. That's all I'm saying. Now, do you think his whole entire body's orange? Right? Do you think his entire... Is his penis orange is what I'm asking? Am I, am I the only one who thinks about this? Yes. Yeah. No, okay. Well, ne next time I, I, I see Putin, I'll ask him. That's... <laughs> Why? He's seen the tapes. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But I've been doing... Uh, I, I do miss Barack Obama because I liked impersonating him. You know, I, 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 I can't quite let him go because his voice is just so smooth, right? But now he can do anything he wants, so I have an idea. He should do nursery rhymes, and he'll win a Grammy because of that voice. Something like, oh, here's the video. Oh, here's the thing. Ring around the rosy. A pocket uh, full of pussies. Ashes. Ashes. Ooh. We all fall down. Uh. Right? Another one. I'll, I'll do one, one more nursery rhyme. Oh, well, here's the thing. Because it's always going to start. Oh, here's the thing. Oh, here's the thing. Mary had a little lion whose uh, fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, <laughs> the lion was sure to go. Right? It would win a Grammy, right? You can even take a, a song, like do a Bill Shatner to a song. Do a Bill Shatner, but cool to a song and do spoken word over lyri you know, lyrics over the music, right? So it'd be something like, well, here's the thing. Yeah. I heard it from a friend who, uh, heard it from a friend who, uh, heard it from another. He had been messing around, right? It would just sound cool, right? But he's not the uh, first president that I've ever Im impersonated. Um, and I'll go back to the first one I ever did in a second, but I gotta do Bill Clinton first. Yeah. I did not have sexual relations with Hillary. Uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is, okay. And, and, and here's the thing I, I wrote a joke the day before the presidential election. I'll, I'll go on to another impersonation in a second. But I, I wrote a joke about, the, about Hillary Clinton the day before the presidential election if she got elected. You guys want to hear it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wrote this the day before the election. Well, Hillary Clinton got elected uh, president, and uh, as a matter of policy, uh, she's only going to have male interns, and that's to keep both her and Bill from being tempted. Uh. Proof I can pick on Democrats, too. Yes. <laughs> but the first joke that I ever did, uh, the first time I ever did was on stage was uh, 30 years ago, October. Yeah, time flies. And that was actually in a uh, pizza place in San Jose, California. And now, 30 years later, I'm in a bowling alley in Rona Park, which means that my career is going exactly as I planned. <laughs> but, now, my, my brother was there at the very first show that I ever did, and because he's here, I'm going to do the very, one of the very first things I ever did, which is Ronald Reagan as a pervert. He's already cracking up. <laughs> Ronald Reagan was president of the United States at the time, and Nancy was first lady, just to give you context. <laughs> I, I'm old. <laughs> oh, Nancy. Oh, Nancy. I'm going to smack that ass. going to smack that ass. Come here, Nancy. I have the handcuffs. Come here. I have the condom. It's my front pocket. Why are you running? 
That's the first thing I ever did on stage. <laughs> the entire audience, they're, they're like eating their pizza or whatever, their pasta, and they're going, oh. <laughs> and uh, I, the other things that I did that day, and I don't remember the routine, so I'm not going to do it. I did Ronald Reagan rapping, and I did Ronald Reagan as a serial killer. So they're, they're, I had a theme going, you know, that night. You know, but, uh, but we did. We legalized uh, pot the same day that we elected Donald Trump here in California. We elected weed is legal now. So in honor of that, I'm going to do stoner moments in history for you guys. <laughs> stoner moments in history, Caesar Augustus. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a day from February, stick it in August, so the same day, length as the day in July, same number of days. And, 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 and February, we'll only have 28 days, so they'll be screwed, but they'll be Black History Month in 2,000 years anyway, so. <laughs> Stoner moments in history, Benjamin Franklin. You know it would be a really good idea? To fly a kite in this lightning storm. <laughs> Stoner moments in history? Jesus Christ. Dude, you know it would be messed up if I told people I was born the same day every year, but I rose from the dead a different day every year. <laughs> Mind blown. Stoner moments in history, everybody. So, so I actually, thank you for that. Um, so, so a little bit more about me. I don't have any biological kids of my own that I know of. But if I did, I, I'd video the birth, uh, because then if my kids come up to me and they say, Daddy, where did babies come from? I can show them. <laughs> Guaranteed not to become a premature grandfather. No, but for good measure, I would name my firstborn daughter uh, Chlamydia. <laughs> you know, it's a friendly sound in the STDs. It sounds exotic, and I can guarantee no guy would come in her until she's 40. So <laughs> that, that works out. But I, 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 I get my kids, so what I would do, I'd sit my kids down when they turn about 18 or whatever and tell them all the shit that's going to happen to the body by age 50, right? Just so they know. Things like, you're going to lose hair where you want hair, and you're going to get hair in other places. You're going to have to be a medical, uh, medication where a fatal event is one of the side effects. When you're done, this is mostly for guys, but when you're done peeing or... You think you're done peeing? You're not done peeing. <laughs> but even the exams get more evasive. For example, the prostate exam. And the thing about the prostate exam is the etiquette confuses me. I mean, if you really like it, can you get it? Uh, do, do you tip after? <laughs> if, if you really like it, can you get it like on a bi-monthly basis? And, and if you can get it on a bi-monthly basis, does it mean that Kaiser's a full-service HMO? <laughs> These are questions I think to, that need to be answered. But, but here's, here's the thing that I think is kind of interesting about this. Every week they come up with another food that you didn't think was good for you, but is now good for you. A, a good example of this is coffee. Coffee is now good for you. Red wine, now good for you. So I'm finally getting drunk tonight, so that's fantastic. But here's the thing. I think the next thing... It's going to be maple syrup. Let's just see it now. And it's going to be sponsored. It's going to be, they're going to have some sort of study, and it's going to be sponsored by the maple syrup cartel, and it's going to get, like, press all over the place. And there actually is a maple syrup cartel up in Canada, okay? Uh, they control the maple syrup, and there's a strategic reserve of maple syrup in Canada. This is a real thing. You can Google this, okay? Now, in the United States, we also have a strategic reserve of oil, Shows the difference in our priorities. Because in Canada, all they're after is a really good breakfast. So, true story. Thousands of gallons of maple syrup are missing out of the strategic reserve. Now, I'm going to repeat that. It is true. Thousands of gallons of maple syrup were missing out of the strategic reserve. So I was thinking to myself, how is this possible? Right? Did, did, did they do an Ocean's Eleven thing where they methodically plan this thing out? Did, did they do, do like a uh, oh, like a Mission Impossible thing where they're dodging lasers? 
Then I realized, no, they're Canadian. They just have the door unlocked. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. And, and here's the thing. Canada, you know, build a wall with Mexico? No. Build the wall with Canada. It's the largest unguarded border on, on the earth. On the face of the earth, it's the largest unguarded border. They're taking all our jobs. Alex Trebek, Michael J. Fox, Jim Carrey. I can go on. I can go on. Russell Peters. Um, Justin Bieber. Justin, well, we can send him back. <laughs> Just report him. We can. So. You guys are, are a pretty awesome audience. You guys having fun tonight? <laughs> now, just got to point out, I did a, a, a movie with this young lady over here, uh, Steve Jobs, yeah? And um, I, I remember... I remember that because uh, we, we struck up a friendship right then like, on that set, and then after that movie, uh, I remember the very next thing I did was I did this movie, uh, or uh, sorry, I did a commercial. I did a commercial for Dell Computer, and they, they told me to shave beard, so I did. Show up on set, and for the next three days, they proceeded to film the back of my head. It's a true story. And for a while, people were going, walking by, and they, they wouldn't recognize me until the, I, walked, like, I walked past them, or they walked past me, and then they look at the back of my head, and they go like, that's where I know you from. <laughs> the back of my head is famous. He's, sign's kind of crooked now. <laughs> so now it's not so much. But yeah, I, I had an article done on me in the uh, San Jose Mercury News, and um, it, it, afterwards things got a little bit weird. And so, I, uh, they, for example, they, they went and they, I was parking my car in downtown Campbell, California. I get out of the car and they say, you're Johnny Corn? I said, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm Johnny Corn. And they go like, I thought you'd drive something nicer. <laughs> but, that is, but I was also at Dollar Tree. Don't judge me, I'm poor. I was out at the Dollar Tree, and, and this guy comes up to me, he said, you're Johnny Corn. And I said, yeah, you suck. <laughs> so I turned to him and said, yes, and I blew too. <laughs> I used to be a vacuum salesman. Who thought that was a dirty joke? I used to be a vacuum salesman. But those who thought it was a dirty joke, come see me after the show. That's all I'm saying. Oh, by the way, you guys have been an awesome audience. Thank you, guys. It's been awesome. I'll tell you what. I would love for you guys to uh, come see me after the show. I'll tell you about a timeshare I got. I'll give you the details. You're all invited to share it with me. I got a really good deal. I got a great deal. Good news is, I got a great deal. It's in Syria. Bad news is, it's ISIS controlled territory. Good news is it was only bombed once, so it has most of its walls, which it's a hot climate, so that's fine. It gets a cross draft through there. And when it rains, the crater becomes a swimming pool, so that's something. Yeah. It, Islamic State in Syria, ISIS, you know, ISIS is an acronym, but it's also the name of a badass Egyptian goddess. So for a group that's so anti-woman, I find it fascinating. They're named after one. But I'll leave you guys with this thought for the day. The, the best protection against identity theft is bad credit. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great tomorrow. Thanks. Thank